Let's move to now that question that I presented to you earlier. And let me frame it up one more time. How do you personally turn your attention? I'm going to quote a verse. This is 2 Corinthians 3.16. I understand that this verse applies to the moment of conversion. But just like almost all, maybe all of Scripture, it has many levels of revelation and application. So listen to this verse. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now that's just powerful. I feel a stirring right now. I really do. It's like when we train ourselves, my friends, when we train ourselves to respond, even if it's in the initiation phase, we turn to the Lord. There's something that automatically begins to kick in. It's, it should become, it will become. I, I just speak it with faith and from my own experience. Oh. oh. When we train ourselves in the right mode, in the right practices, when we train ourselves, they become actual. They don't become theological anymore or theoretical anymore. They become actual. And so what I want to ask now is, if you don't mind, is, I realize you ought to be a little vulnerable, but I don't think there's any shame in any of this because there's no wrong answer. It's very personal for each of us. The question is, how do you turn? You're turning, whether that's in your mind or in your belly. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow. How do you turn to the Lord? How do you put your attention on him. When I was a child, uh, we went to a move of God up in Iowa, and they were a, uh, a movement of churches, multiple churches around the country, and uh, they were very much uh, spiritual churches, and uh, so they taught us how to engage our spirit man, and their way was to put our hands over our stomach because remember Jesus said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water and so put our hands over our stomach and then just spoke to our spirit man to come awake to come to full height to become uh, uh, engaged and uh, rise up to take leadership you might say and so that has always been a one of my ways so I just see myself not I say this here's another thing I say is try not to think with my brain think with my belly how you like that concept <laughs> don't think with your brain think with your belly now when we say belly of course we're saying our spirit man but to me to take it out of my brain helps me wean me from mental and it brings it down to what Jesus said, my belly, my spirit man. And what would my spirit man be thinking? So then, I mean, literally, at, at this moment, this very moment, with my hands on my stomach, I'm feeling tingles go down my legs and up my torso. And as I said earlier, as we train ourselves, it becomes habitual. It becomes a learned response. It becomes actual rather than theoretical. More than just a duty or a function that we kind of activate in, it becomes a reality. So that's why in whatever we're doing here, like I said, aligning our spirit, man, spirit and soul and body, this wants to be a, a norm of our lives so that when we engage it's just like well now I don't even have to think about it it just is okay so that's one thing I do is put my hands on my belly literally and I begin to think with my spirit and give full attention full credence to my spirit man here's another thing I do and this one is a little uh, uh, I use this one for 
just my mental purposes. Back when I was a kid, I found I couldn't go to sleep. My mind would just go a thousand directions. And I'm like, like this. And I'm like, Lord, I want to go to sleep. And so I would corral my thoughts and literally inside of my head with my eyesight, but my eyes were closed. I would see all my attention going from here to here and I would wipe out all thoughts and I wouldn't allow my mind to think any of those distracting thoughts. Now that's what I started with and then as I begin moving into the spiritual realm, the heavenly realm, I begin to see that narrow place as my doorway into the heart of God, into the mind of God. So that little practice that I used in the mental realm ended up becoming a spiritual tool. So that's another way I use. And I'll say one more and then tag your it, all right? In my Bible, I have a little three by five card. It's just a piece of paper. And if my mind has been dictating to me and has gotten me calloused and dry and distracted and I want to feel soft again tender again I just get a hold of what I call my on ramps that's the title on ramps and here I have about 12 or 13 things that will help my heart be tender. They're predictable. They're, they're, I, and I don't know why exactly. They, they, are, they aren't something that I said, oh Lord, make me tender over this. Some of them are scripture verses and some of them are experiences that I had in the past and some of them, one of them is even a daydream. But every time I talk about them, or many times, as I just open my Bible and put my hands on it, it's like that learned response. My heart just, whoo, just melts, and I'm already there. Because why? I've traveled down this road many times. Many times I've gone to meetings. You know, I'm the speaker and I'm supposed to speak and I don't want to speak from a cold heart. I don't want to speak from a cold, dry, perfunctory head. I want to speak from a soft heart. Something that's ooey gooey. (laughs) How do you do that? How do you get yourself from dry and callous to tender and ooey gooey? Well... I just open my Bible and I pull out my on-ramps and I just say, Lord, could I just tell you about this right here? And now it helps me when I speak it out loud. When I speak it out loud, my ears get to hear it. And I get to reinforce the validity, the value of it. And so I speak it out. And here, I'll just say one verse. This is Luke 2.13. Golly, I'm almost going there right now. (laughs) And Simeon, here's a man with great passion in the temple. This is pre-Jesus. He's in the temple and his heart longs, oh, does it long, to see the Messiah. He's read the messianic prophecies of Isaiah and Ezekiel and David and others. He's read those and he believes them and he's prayed them with great sincerity and great passion. One day Jesus come, or God comes to him and says, Simeon, one of these days you get to see it with your own eyes. You'll see the Messiah with your own eyes. Well, that's a pretty good day, isn't it? He gets this, a promise from God. He gets to see him with his own eyes. But then one day there's this young couple come in with this little package, this little bundle of joy, and they put this little baby, eight days old, in his arms. Instantly, 
all that he had ever longed for, the thing that had gripped his prayers and permeated everything that he longed for, had come to pass in front of him at that moment. And he says, Now my eyes have beheld the consolation of Israel. His passions were realized. God's personal promise to him was fulfilled. Now, I don't know why that impacts me so deeply. Almost every time I let my heart ruminate on it. But when I do, oh, my heart is tenderized in a moment. So that's just one more of my tools, one more of my ways to turn. The question was, how do you turn? As much as one tool, one way, may be pretty regularly dependable, (laughs) you know, different days we have different needs. (laughs) And so to have several tools on deck to be able to use as our turning mechanism, I think is very advantageous. I think some of us have just kind of by osmosis <laughs> um, learned a few things that we have not really thought about. They just kind of happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's great to use that, especially as it feels easy. You know, it, it comes normal, natural sometimes, and it, it's awesome. But what about that day when you can't find that place and you haven't identified it? You haven't uh, uh, identified the mechanics, the methods of how it works. So how do you find that then if it doesn't function automatically? So I just recommend that you write down as many ways as you can how you actuate or come into the turning mode. How do you actually turn? And it'll be very different in, for each of us. And actually, in some cases, it's going to be so nebulous, it'll be hard to put it in words. But uh, I think we all have probably a multiple ways that we do it. Uh, but the more we have, the better we are, I think. Uh, you mentioned worship. And of course, that's a big door opener. But... Uh, Obviously, we can't have that all the time anywhere. And right. We can when we have uh, control of our situation. And so, but it is a big one. Here's another big one. Most of us now have heard Teresa. Uh, she gets on our signal uh, group. By the way, if you're not on our signal group, uh, it's we just call it our ALC group uh, forum. ALC group forum. But uh, Teresa is just a most wonderful inspiration because her heart is so childlike and tender. And she's like, uh, Father God just takes her in his arms. She's a five-year-old little girl. She speaks from that perspective most of the time with great adoration and intimacy and joy and a sense of security and protection and uh, it's just very infectious. So if it becomes difficult to turn, that's our subject right now, if it becomes difficult to turn, sometimes it's helpful to get somebody to lead us. 